The question that I have for you is what does it take to motivate your patients to be as healthy as possible, to deal with the stresses, the international crises, the issues that we have are all external, but internally we sometimes take on the worst that one could imagine. However, through a state of mind, through proper exercise, through proper supplementation, through understanding bioidentical hormones, we can fulfill our genetic potential. We can reach our personal best. How many here have found that through exercise, nutrition, and bioidentical hormones, and a positive state of mind, that life looks better and you feel better no matter what your age? Let me see a show of hands. That's very true, isn't it? Anti-aging medicine is really the application of the science, not the hearsay, not the assumptions. So what we're going to review right now is a very exact program to help you and your patients to improve and go beyond your personal expectations. It takes discipline, it takes planning, it takes training consistency, correct application of exercise principles, and motivation. Here's an example of Kelly Nelson at this picture, a grandmother, age 73, who started her training plan at age 68. Her daughter, shown next to her, Colleen, at age 44, is also a, a Grand Masters champion. And they applied the principles of nutrition, utilizing a dietary factor, which I studied with the great Nathan Pritikin, who received the Affinity Award from the A4M. Several years ago, Nathan Pritikin proposed that a high complex carbohydrate, low fat diet, adequate in protein, could sufficiently meet and exceed one's personal performance. He demonstrated studies by Dr. Assad, the physiologist, showing that you could outdo your performance in exercise physiology with sufficient flow at about two calories per minute of glucose, which is what you derive from a simple apple or potato or brown rice. If you drink Coca-Cola, you get 18 calories per minute, which is too quick. Your insulin goes up, the blood sugar goes up, the triglycerides increase, and possibly triglycerides clumping the fat cells restrict circulation. In fact, Colleen, Colleen, Colleen and Co Kelly consume a diet that's much like what I just described, rice, fruits, and vegetables. They do not consume fish, chicken, turkey, meat, what you typically think of a, of a bodybuilding diet because the proteins are so concentrated they're toxic and hard for the kidneys and the body to assimilate. It's very difficult to maintain bone density on a high protein diet. It's very difficult to maintain proper energy requirements. In fact, protein, if you look up the statistics, when you digest proteins it leaves 38 percent waste products. Carbohydrates leave no waste products, zero. The only excretion is water, which you excrete, and carbon dioxide, which you exhale. They're the purest born, uh, burning fuel ever known, better than any fuel that an automobile or vehicle could use. They were designed perfectly for the human body to function. Yet when you consume fat, it leaves ketones as a byproduct. If you only consume fat, the waste byproduct of ketones could cause ketoacidosis and a diabetic pre-state. You look at Bob Delmatique in here, age 84, and a sequence of pictures, age 17, 67, and 80. He was here at the conference yesterday in the exhibit hall. Quite a phenomenal example of anti-aging at its best. Men tend to decline faster than women, and yet look at Bob at age 84. The principles he follows are much like I'm going to describe. Here's individuals of similar age to Bob Delmantique. You can see the sagging chest, the muscles in the back, the skin, around the knees, the signs of aging around the neck, the hair, all signs of premature hormone decline, enzyme decrease, and biochemical function depletion. Uh, the skin is a good example of aging. The skin can become so thin it'll easily bruise. In fact, in some people, by the age of 70, 80, or 90, if you touch their skin, you can tear it. It bleeds. 
Skin cancer is rampant in people with low thyroid. Dry skin, pale skin due to low testosterone. Slow healing, bruising. Low cortisol causes the skin to become inflamed. If you pinch your skin right now, just take your skin and pinch it like that and let go and watch and see how long it takes for the skin to spring back, that's a good sign to measure the elasticity of your skin and if you sufficiently have adequate growth hormone and testosterone. And yet there's a bias today to intervene with growth hormone and testosterone. A doctor would intervene if you're low in thyroid, but they rarely will admit that you need growth hormone or testosterone. So endocrinological intervention, you as the doctor must establish the connection to the patient's symptoms. The declines can be determined based on your medical examination, your laboratory tests, and we certainly advise, and let me see a show of hands, how many are employing and utilizing 24-hour urine hormone testing to measure all the metabolites of hormones? Let me see a show of hands, 24-hour urines. You know the biggest excuse I hear? Patients won't do a 24-hour urine. It's too difficult. The reality is you take a jug, you have to urinate anyway. On Sunday morning, you begin after you discard your first morning urine. You collect for every single time, take an extra large bag with you that day, keep the urine uh, a container, collect every single time to the next morning, measure the amount of milliliters of urine in there, pour it into a little container, and send it off to the lab. How difficult is that when you have to still follow your own biological urge. That hormone test will show us the good and the bad estrogens, something often overlooked, 16 alpha hydroxyesterone and 2 hydroxyesterone, the good estrogen. Doctors will tell me, but I measured his estrogen or hers and it seemed quite fine. There was no estrogen dominance in the man. Ah, but you missed the downstream estrogen metabolite. I've often seen a normal estradiol and esterone and estriol, but I've seen excessive levels of this harmful byproduct toxin. When I wrote the article in the winter 2003 Anti-Aging Medical News,